Hello, you are welcome to As a Matter of Fact. We want to welcome you from the festive season. We hope you enjoyed responsibly. We know that, you know, so many things transpired. Several people had problems, uh, including accidents, including losing their lives and their dear friends. But all in all, we want to welcome you from the festives. And, you know, welcome back to this channel, As a Matter of Fact, where we dissect a lot of information. Today we want to talk about something rather contentious and we want to discuss the tensions between the government of Rwanda and DRC and we are asking ourselves is a war between Rwanda and Congo inevitable? In other words, is Rwanda and Congo on a verge of a war, an armed conflict for that matter? That's what we're going to be discussing in today's discussion, in today's show. So welcome aboard, and I hope you will enjoy. Now, tensions between the government of Rwanda and Congo have been on for a long period of time, dated years way back. And, uh, you know, it is understood on several platforms that there have been allegations that the government of Rwanda has been backing the M23. These are reports that are all over, as, as according to several sources, and UN itself, which has on several occasions accused Rwanda of backing the M23 rebels, or the March 23rd rebels, that are operating majorly in the Eastern DRC. The M23, you know, had at one point uh, seemingly reduced their attacks in the DRC until of recent 2020, you know, 2021 towards the end and 2022 early when the resurgence of the M23 took place. M23 continued or resurrected attacks in the Eastern DRC, capturing several villages and townships in the Eastern uh, part of Congo, especially in northern, northern Kivu. The M23 as well, you know, started by capturing uh, a town near the border of Uganda and Congo at Bunagana, and then infiltrated inside DRC in the eastern part. So there's been accusations from one side to another. Rwanda accuses, you know, DRC, and DRC accuses Rwanda of backing the M23, while, you know, Rwanda accuses uh, the government of Congo of backing the FDLR, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Rwanda, which has been operating in the DRC ever since the 1994 genocide. So Rwanda thinks or believes that the government of DRC has been backing this rebel group to carry out attacks in Rwanda basing in the DRC. So these counter accusations have escalated of late. Okay? There's been accusation after accusation. So there is a fear, there is worry that this could escalate further. At the, at the end of last year, that is 2022, there was a truth or a pact signed between the government of DRC and the government of Rwanda in the Angolan capital of Rwanda. Now, this truth was to see the reduction or a total, a total end to, you know, clashes between the two governments. And these were to also see the M23 stop carrying out their atrocities in the eastern part of DRC. My question there is, how does this truce that involves the government of Rwanda and DRC affect the M23 if there is no connection there? However, the M23 rushed, you know, to uh, say that 
the fact that they were not presented while the truce was being signed is a sign that they were not going to adhere to whatever resolutions were made during that meeting or during the signing of the truce. The tensions escalated, okay? There were more accusations. Rwanda accused, no, no, no. The government of DRC accused Rwanda of always sabotaging the development of peace deals. In other words, whenever there is a step, there is something that the government of Rwanda does that takes you know, the peace deals down. And that's why, or oh, that is believed to be one of the reasons why when the East African standby force was being deployed in the DRC, because currently countries like Uganda, Sudan, uh, I mean, Uganda, South Sudan, Kenya have deployed the troops in the DRC. And the only country that has not surfaced among the member states is, you know, notable is Rwanda. It is alleged that the government of DRC under the stewardship of Felix Tshisekedi said they don't want Rwandan troops as part of this mission in the DRC because they already have bias against them. So these counter accusations and this lack of trust in one another is what has been going on between the government of Rwanda and Congo for so long. And if peace is to be reached, this is something that has to be dealt with decisively. The recent master shock accusation was, by, was made by the government of the DRC accusing Rwanda of a plot to assassinate the person of the president or a plot to assassinate Felix Tshisekedi through spies. Now, a few days ago, two men of the Rwandan origin in the names of Dr. Juvenile Nshimana and Moses Moshabe were arrested and aligned before journalists in the DRC and these men were being accused of plotting this assassination. It is said according to the government of Rwanda, of, uh, the government of DRC through their spokesperson that these two people had bought chunks of land near an international airport called Ndijidi, near the Ndijidi International Airport and Kibomago Military Base. These guys had bought chunks of land around these strategic locations in order to carry out a plan for the assassination and according to the spokesperson of the DRC, he says that exactly the same way it was masterminded during the assassination of the ex-president of Rwanda, Habiari Mana. You know, that is a big accusation, an accusation that can lead into war. It is big an accusation that can lead into an armed conflict between these two countries. Okay? So, uh, according to the spokesperson, he says, these guys had bought land near these strategic locations where definitely the president of the DRC always flies. However, Rwanda came out immediately to refute the allegations and said that these were baseless talks. It is their feud, it is their, you know, uh, um, it is there the issues that have been outstanding that are leading to all this but these are baseless accusations these two gentlemen were just workers for Africa Health uh, for 
or a staff of African Health Development Organization and had nothing to do with, you know, plotting an assassination. An assassination. However, there were pictures, there were pictures and connections that started surfacing that one of these gentlemen is a son to uh, a military officer, a major general for that matter, in Rwandan army. And the son himself has, uh, and the son himself is a member of the uh, Rwandan army. Um, we shall, you know, pick some quotes and read from one of the articles, an article in uh, the Chimp Report. It is titled, Congo Arrests Spies, Accuses Rwanda of Plot to Shoot Down President Tshisekedi's Plan. Such an allegation, big enough to start havoc between countries. Relations between the Democratic Republic of Congo have worsened with Kinshasa accusing Chigali of creating a spionage cell in Congo with plans to shoot down President Felix Tshisekedi's presidential jet. The DRC Security Service on December 27, 2022 paraded two Rwandan citizens, Dr. Juvenile, Dr. Juvenine, Nshimimana, and Moses Musabe, both staff of the African Health Development Organization. So it is true that these two gentlemen were staff of African Development, African Health Development Organization uh, in the DRC, or best in the DRC, but their uh, acquisition of land just next to the airport and a military boss, uh, the military base have led to such allegations against them. Um, Congolese army spokesperson Sylvain Ekenge said upon decrypting one of Musabe's phones, Musabe, Moses is one of, you know, the, 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 the arrested uh, Randis that we are talking about, Congolese security service found that he had mapped strategic military sites in Kinshasa with the support of the Congolese army. So when they went through this guy's phone and decrypted some of the messages in there, they found out that this gentleman had mapped strategic locations, strategic military locations in the DRC, and he had help seemingly by the, uh, some of the Congolese army. Musabe is said to be a serving military officer with Rwanda's military intelligence, a son of Major General Eric Murobere, the commander of the reserved forces of Rwanda. You know, they went ahead to post pictures of the two together, father and son we mean. So Minister Madongo accuses the NGO of acquiring large tracts of land around Ndijili International Airport and Kibomago military base as part of operations to kill in court Tshisekedi, just like RPF did to assassinate the former Rwandan President Juvenile Habyarimana. So, according to this article in the Chimp reports, it sounds as though the basis of the allegation is the fact that the NGO, the African Health Development Organization, within which these two gentlemen work, had acquired land near an international airport and a military base that is more of a replica 
or plan that was used during the assassination of the ex-president of Rwanda, Habyarimana. Could this just be a wild thought? That coincidentally, these two gentlemen, through the organization that they work for, acquired land just next to the international airport and a military base, uh, according which according to Rwanda, which are very strategic when anyone wants to cause, you know, trouble in the DRC. You know, to show you the magnitude of the problem between these two countries, towards the end of last year, the Kinshasa government expelled the ambassador of Rwanda, uh, you know, in an agreement by the Security Council that was spearheaded by Felix Tshisekedi. And, you know, that was after and soon after. There's been a lot of hate speech, you know, against the, uh, the, the people of Rwandan origin and people who speak uh, Chinyarwanda in the DRC. So the escalation of the issues between these two governments seems to be going on every day and they have to, in one way or the other, be dealt with. After a given period of time, during the uh, New Year's message delivered by the president of the DRC, he also, you know, made a comment that the government of the DRC, you know, that was after, you know, refuting all these allegations of assassination and blah, blah, blah. The government, he said, the government of DRC has failed to govern the eastern part of the country. He says, the reason, I quote, the reason the situation prevails is because DRC is willing and unable to govern its territory. You know, we're trying to show you the different uh, back and forth accusations by these two different governments. One is backing FDR, one is backing M23, one is doing this, you are doing this, you are doing the other. Now, the last nail being an accusation of an assassination plot against the president of DRC, shortly after the government of Rwanda through an address by the president, you know, accuses the DRC for failing to control the situation in the Eastern, in Eastern DRC, saying the situation prevails because DRC is unwilling, underline the word, unwilling or unable to govern their territory. And we all know that the territory being talked about is the Eastern DRC because that's where there was wars. Uh, th that's where there are fights and rebel groups that are in we know, 140 in number or so. So these are big accusations that one could think that they can easily turn to mount into a war between these two countries. Now, the remedy is, these countries should continue to sit on a round table to find lasting solutions, negotiate and get to understand each other's queries and how they can be dealt with. If DRC is accusing Rwanda of backing M23, what can be done to ensure that the M23 ceases to carry out atrocities in the DRC? If the government of Rwanda is accusing uh, the government of Congo of backing the FDRR, then the government of Congo should distance itself from this group and possibly work hand in hand with the government of Rwanda to either um, drive this group from DR Congo 
or find an amicable understanding that this group can be dealt with. Otherwise, this bickering, back and forth accusations are likely to tantamount into an armed conflict between these two countries. And who knows where it could take place. It can either be in Rwanda or in Congo. But most likely, it could be in the vast and insecure part of the DRC. And the repercussions, the, uh, the aftermath, the effects will, you know, just be onto a day-to-day -day person that is trying to survive in the country that is torn, whose, dear, you, whose eastern part is torn apart. So we hope that these two countries can sit on a round table and find a lasting solution. There's been a glimpse of hope, uh, you know, looking at the truce in, in Rwanda between the two countries, but while it seems to settle, the dust seems to settle, somehow it is tarred. So those are angles through which these two governments should look at and reasonably find a solution to the problems that both countries are facing in terms of rebels that are in the Eastern DRC. Otherwise, that's what we had for you today. On, as a matter of fact, you hope you picked a leaf. We're trying to say that according to what is going on and the accusations and counter accusations, there's a likelihood of an armed conflict between the two, these two countries if a solution is not found as early as possible. Among which is what is going on right now, the deployment of the East African standby force that is you know, directly confronting the M23. But also a solution should be found for the FDRR or the, the, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Rwanda to be dealt with so that Rwanda does not continue accusing DRC of backing them. There are questions definitely about the DRC backing the, 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 the FDRR rebels because I see as though there is incapacitation in the government of DRC to do that. They already have other problems to deal with. I am not sure and I don't think they would have the tools, the manpower, the resources to again back another rebel union to terrorize their neighboring country. However, a peaceful solution should be thought before things escalate into an armed conflict. Thanks for watching. Please, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, adios. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button such that you can be reminded whenever we put a new video. Much love.